It's been weeks since Netflix released their live adaptation of Avatar The Last Airbender, and there have been mixed reviews. Some people absolutely love it, some people don't exactly hate it, and some people think that this is even worse than the movie. For me, honestly, I also have mixed feelings. I know that since Netflix is adapting the animation, so of course we're not going to have a one-to-one -one copy of the original. But while I was watching the live action, I just couldn't stop myself from comparing it to the original. It's just that I've watched the original so many times that it's etched into my heart, mind, and soul. <laughs> it is absolutely my favorite show of all time after all. So as much as I didn't want to compare the live adaptation to the original, I just couldn't help myself. It was honestly really frustrating for me to watch, and I actually have a lot of thoughts about the changes Netflix did, and this is what the video is about. At first, I was going to make one whole video about what I like and don't like about the changes Netflix did, but I realized that would mean a very long video, so I decided to split it instead. Let me first talk about the positives. Hi, I'm Zidney, longtime Avatar fan, and here is Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender. Top 5 Changes I Like Number 1. Showing the Airbender's Genocide Right from the beginning, Netflix wants to show its audience that they're taking a more serious approach for their live adaptation of Avatar The Last Airbender. I'm actually 50-50 about Netflix showing the genocide because it honestly undercuts the tension of Aang slowly discovering that all of his loved ones are gone. But I decided to include it in the positives because I already have a long list of things I didn't like about the show. In the animation, the series began with Katara and Sokka discovering Aang inside the iceberg. Aang was only able to see the aftermath of the Fire Nation attack when he visited the Air Temple, which again is better, storytelling-wise. On Netflix, they really showed the Fire Nation attacking the airbenders. It was really gruesome to see airbenders get burnt alive. Though I was disappointed with how they portrayed Monk Gyatso's death because it would have been so cool to see this popular theory come to life. So was this change necessary? Not really, that's why it's so low on the list. But I did appreciate how it was able to portray the severity of the attack. Number 2. Yue, a waterbender The second change I like was Yue being a waterbender. We never saw Yue waterbend in the animated version, and her wiki says she gained waterbending abilities only after becoming the moon spirit. But it actually makes sense that Yue is a waterbender, since the moon spirit did give her life. At first, I thought Yue did some magic hocus pocus on the ice cream. I mean, they weirdly did add the prophecy powers for the previous avatars. But then I realized that it was actually waterbending, and yeah, it made sense that she's a waterbender. Why wouldn't the person filled with the moon spirit be a waterbender? So it was great to see Yue waterbend in the live adaptation. Number 3. Iroh accounted for his actions This is what we never saw in the animated series. We already knew that Iroh was a great military general, conquering cities before he was a calm, tea-loving uncle. But we never really saw the consequences of his actions. Yes, his son Luten died and this devastated Uncle Iroh, but he never really paid for what he did to the other nations. So it was great to see an earthbender soldier confront Iroh about his past crimes. A person can feel regret for what he's done, and he can even change for the better, but he still has to face the consequences of his actions. I've actually discussed this concept in my The Flash Our Actions Have Consequences video. Go check it out, it's a great lesson to learn. Number 4. Relationships Explored Another change that I really appreciated is how the relationships between the characters were explored more. I really love Aang and Monk Yatso's interactions. It has put a tear in my eyes every time the two were on screen, especially when Aang sees Gyatso again. Though lore-wise, you don't really see dead people in the spirit world. To be clear, the spirit world isn't the afterlife. Only those who are in touch with their spirituality can go to the spirit world. But I guess Netflix changed it because Katara and Sokka were also in the spirit world with Aang, which didn't make any sense and they didn't really explain it properly. I've separated my spirit from my body. But 
somehow I brought you guys with me. How is that possible? It must be the energies in the place and then it's up the barrier in my power. Wait, I'm not here to talk about that. Aang and Ma Gyatso. Yes. I really enjoyed their interaction and of course what we never got in the animated version. Aang getting closure. Another good relationship that got even deeper was Zuko and Uncle Iroh's. Adding Luton's funeral to the show was such a great idea. We see Zuko comforting his uncle by sharing heartwarming stories about his cousin. Not only does this added depth to Zuko and Uncle Iroh's already rich relationship, this also showed Zuko and Luton's bond. It never occurred to me that Zuko lost his cousin too. So I really like how they portrayed Zuko's closeness to Uncle Iroh and Luton. Number 5. The 41st Division The best change for me was the 41st Division being Zuko's crew. In both the original and the live adaptation, we see a flashback of how Zuko got his scar. During an important Fire Nation meeting, they planned to sacrifice the 41st Division, a group of young recruits. But Zuko spoke out against this cruel decision. As punishment, Ozai insisted that Zuko fight him in a ritual called Agni Kai. In the original, Zuko refused to fight his father, and as a result, Ozai banished his son and decreed that he could only return if he captured the Avatar. In Netflix adaptation, Zuko almost defeats his father, but shows him mercy. Ozai takes this for weakness and sends him out to sea for him to learn from real-life experience, but to still not return without the Avatar. In the animated series, this story is told by Iroh to Zuko's crew who is a group of random people, but in the live-action version, he is telling the story directly to the 41st Division. When the 41st Division realized what their prince sacrificed to save their lives, they had this newfound respect for him. And for me, this is really the best change Netflix did. And I'm actually surprised that they didn't do this in the animated version. It's just something the original would have honestly done. So, there you have it. The top 5 Avatar The Last Airbender changes Netflix did that I actually like. The live adaptation wasn't so bad. They were able to flesh out some important parts of the original. So we got some good out of it. A lot of the actors were spot on. Plus, I wasn't really expecting a one-to-one -one copy of the original. If they did, what's the point of adapting it? But there were still a lot of changes I didn't like, and I feel like Netflix didn't really understand when making the live adaptation, which I will be talking about in my next video. And it is a lot. So, stay tuned. Hello, so it's been a very very busy month for me so I wasn't able to post videos more consistently. But I still do my best to make them because I really love talking about shows I watch. Especially this um, Netflix avatar, The Last Airbender. So please subscribe, like, and leave a comment because it really helps motivate me to make more videos. Thank you so much for watching. See you again next time. Bye!